Good evening to all. Very good evening and happy evening. Hello everyone. This is Philip Madi from Pantaki Learning. And I welcome you all for engage your learning experience with Pantaki Learning anytime, anywhere and any places. We are always supporting to the students in a technical way. What is our main vision? We are going to help 10 million students to learn the technical knowledge by the ECB. And I welcome you all in today's session of Machine Learning Masterclass, the day 11 of Machine Learning Masterclass. I welcome you all once again. I welcome you all once again. Happy evening to all. Happy evening. Yeah. Today, we are going to discussing about rainfall prediction by using the machine learning technology. Rainfall prediction by using the machine learning technology. So, in this uh, particular target, in this particular target, most commonly for human, they are like, you know, can predict based on the weather condition. Uh, I mean, you know, like uh, uh, before years, I mean, you know, past years. So, for old men, they can predict in an easy way because of the weather condition. So, that is a little bit of easy task for the human. But it is not an easy task for the computer. So, now we are going to create a model for the rain for prediction based on the weather condition. That's very important. Okay. So, without delay, I am going to enter the topic today. Yeah. Yes. So, very initially, the introduction of this particular target. So, we will implement the predictive model on the rain data set to predict whether the rain will be fall or not tomorrow or today, whatever it is based on the weather condition. Today, there are, I mean, you know, like no certain method by using which can be predicted whether the rain will be fall today or not like that. So, even that, uh, I mean, you know, one certain particular department to find to predicting the rainfall prediction, that is not an easy task for them. Sometimes it will be fail. But in this particular article, in this particular, I mean, in a project, we will be learn how to build the machine learning method, machine learning model, which we can predict whether, the based on the weather condition, whether there will be like, you know, the rain will be fall or not, based on the weather condition. Some of the atmospheric factor, the rain will be fall or not. Right, so that is our target. So that is the basic introduction for the rainfall prediction. Okay, so what is our main objective of this particular project? So the main objective of this particular project is to help to like you know read the data set and to predict the I mean you know like rainfall detection by using the machine learning technology. So based on the weather condition, for example, the temperature range, the humidity range. For like you know the air wind range. So based on this kind of the range, the rain will be fall or not. That can be possible by you are training the model. So what is our main objective? We are going to creating and training a model for the rainfall prediction by using the two different machine learning algorithm. So while you are using the two different machine learning algorithm, we have to find the best model for our particular target based on the evaluation scores. So what we are going to do today? So we are going to create two different model by using the two different algorithm in machine learning that will be helped to create the model and training the model based on the evaluation process, based on the evaluation score, which model is best. We can find it easily. Okay, so that is our main objective of today's target. Okay, so are you guys are ready to learn different things? If you guys are ready, means please mention in the comment box as well. And one more thing, if you guys are really like the session, means don't forget to hit the like button. That will be more encouraging for us. Okay, please do it. And this is not a regular class. This is not a regular class. Please interact with me. Okay, right. So now... What is the problem statement? Here, a statement of the problem here, design a predictive model with the use of the machine learning algorithm for forecast whether the rain will be fall or not. Sometimes it is not an easy task. Am I right? It is not an easy task. But we have to train a model by using the several kind of the data sets that will be very easy because while you are training the model based on the certain value of the different uh, like you know weather condition we are using the labeled data 
So already we have the label based on the weather condition. For example, this much of temperature range, this much of the humidity range, this much of the wind range, this and the rain will be fall or not. The data is already we have in a past details for the past years. Based on that particular detail, we are going to train a machine, train a model by using the machine learning algorithm as well as the Amadino with the help of the data set. So, for the particular information, we can train the model with the help of this particular information about that. So, what is the problem statement here? Actually, this is the classification problem. These or that. Yes or no. For or not. Like that, this is the outcome. So, we have to choose the based on the problem. The classification algorithm is the best option to giving the solution for this particular target. So, what is our target today? Rainfall prediction based on the weather condition. Okay, right. So, what is the proposed method here? What is the proposed method here? Here, we are using the two different algorithms. What is the logistic regression? Already we discussed yesterday's class. That is like, like you know, iris, flower, classification, uh, that particular project we were discussing about this particular algorithm. And also, we are using the random forest here. We are using the random forest as well. So, we are going to use the two different algorithms. So, in this particular project, we are going to implement the predictive model on the rainfall data set. Whether the rain will be fall or not, these are the things by tomorrow or today. So, here, we have to use the two different algorithm to creating a model and training a model. So, based on the evaluation score, we can find the best model for our particular target. Most probably, these two different algorithms can help to, like, you know, uh, creating a model for the classification problem. And it will be giving the, I mean, like, taking the decision by itself. So, in this particular proposed method, we are using the two different algorithms, that is, logistic regression and also the random forest regression. So, based on the evaluation score, we can choose the best model for our particular target. Okay, right. So, what is the project action? So, already we know that the same procedure. First, we need to collecting the data and we need to loading the data for our particular target. And that the pre-processing is very important. Why? This pre-processing is a very important to training a model. Without pre-processing, it is not the right way to training a model because of it will not giving the, I mean, you know, right performance output and it will not giving the, I mean, you know, like uh, the percentage value very high. Because of we are expecting the, like, you know, nearly 90 percentage or uh, like that. So, based on the accuracy score, we can find the best model for our particular target. So, pre-processing is the most important things to loading the data. For the training. Okay, right. After that, next, splitting the data. So, what is the purpose of splitting? Already we know that we are going to split the data like you know, independent data as well as the dependent data. So, once you are going to split, we have to train a model. Sorry, we have to train in the data set, we have to prepare in the training data set as well as the testing data set. Training data set will help to training a model. Testing data set will help to validating the model or evaluating the model. It will be returning the percentage of the, like, you know, uh, particular model. That is like, you know, uh, uh, what is that? Performance score. And model training with the help of the trained data set and evaluation. Here, we are going to use the two different algorithms. So, that means we are going to create the two different algorithm, training the two different algorithm and validating the two different algorithm. So, five major procedures we are going to follow to create the project for rainfall prediction. Hope you guys are understood about it. Hope you guys are understood about it. I hope you are listening to the classes today. If you guys are listening to the classes, mean, please raise your hands in the comment box. Okay, right, fine. Now, what is random forest and what is logistic regression? We have to discuss today. The first one, because we are going to use the two different algorithms. First, random forest. About the random forest, it is a supervised machine learning algorithm. 
that means we are going to use in the labeled data and it is used for the classification majorly and what is random forest exactly random forest is a classifier that contains number of decision trees already we know that what is the meaning of the decision tree decision tree in the sense the condition based that's offer will be accepted or not these or that these or that zero or one yes or no like that that is the decision tree so based on the several condition the outcome will be the like you know based on the probability calculation so these are that and like you know binary value so what is the meaning of the random forest the random forest is consist of number of decision trees in a various uh, like you know subset of the given data set and it takes the average to improve the prediction to for the accuracy score of the data sets so that is nothing but a random forest and how it will be work i will be explained in the next slide why we are going to choose the random forest for this particular problem because it is reduce the risk of overfitting and requiring the rhyming time and also it offers high level accuracy and also the running efficiency on the large amount of the data set so it will be effectively run on the large amount of the data set so that's why we are going to prefer the random forest algorithm and how does it works so simply i'm saying uh, in a i mean you know one particular para random forest randomly selecting the observations and building a decision trees okay the data set is applied on the particular decision trees because of the random forest having the multiple decision trees each decision trees will giving the result each decision trees will giving the result when you are going to applying the data set that means the random forest randomly selecting the observations and building your decision tree and then the result is obtained based on the majority of voting for example i will tell you i will give you the example for this so he here so the result is obtained based on the majority of voting for example uh, the 10 number of decision trees it is consists of 10 number of the decision trees it will be giving the result like you know nearly eight decision trees one and only two is a zero in the sense what is the majority of voting that is one so we are going to prefer one the output will be one one okay so no formulas are required here to calculating this one okay right. so this is the basic information about this particular random forest so how does it works that's very important you can see here when you are going to apply the draining data set on the random forest so based on the data set so how many like you know the decision trees we have to apply on it see here first step select the random sample from given data or training data set what is the second step this algorithm will construct a decision tree for every training data set and once the every decision trees will giving the result the rain will be fall yes in the sense the output will be yes because of the voting finally the prediction will be yes see here the first randomly selecting the sample and to apply in the decision trees so selecting the sample we have to apply on the multiple decision tree in the random forest algorithm that random forest algorithm like you know consists of multiple decision trees so that's why we are going to apply the data set on the sample to every decision trees each and every decision trees will giving the one particular result so based on the voting we have to find the majority of the voting of the output from the decision tree that voting will giving the prediction for example in our target random for uh, prediction so based on the i mean you know like when you are going to apply the data set on the multiple decision trees that decision trees will giving the result yes for example if you are going to apply the hundred number of the decision trees that hundred number of the decision trees nearly 80 percentage of the decision trees will giving the result yes in the sense what is the majority vote the 80 percentage vote for s yes. 
So what is the prediction? Yes, the rain will be fall. That's it. That's the prediction based on the voting, based on the average. Okay, this is the way it will be work. Okay, right. So what about the logistic regression? Already we were discussed yesterday. It's okay. I will explain one more time. So what is logistic regression? It is a supervised algorithm. It is used for the classification as well as the categorical. So what is uh, like, you know, logistic regression here? The logistic regression predicts the output of the categorical depends on the, I mean, you know, dependent variable. The logistic regression predicts the output for a categorical dependent variable. That means the logistic regression is used to finding the relationship between the independent as well as the dependent. Okay, so independent variable can be, I mean, you know, like giving the output like, you know, nominal, ordinary null and interval time. That means the output will be like, you know, 0 or 1, these or that, true or false, like that. So that's why I mentioned here. So independent variable can be nominal, ordinary null of interval. So it will be returning the output like, you know, the dependent value will be these or that. So it is a majorly classification problem. Why we are going to choose this particular logistic regression? So logistic regression performs the better when the data is linearly separable and it is easily easy to implement the training a model by using the linear a logistic regression. And how does it work? Actually, the logistic regression is derived from the concept of the logistic function that is used in the logistic function is known as the sigmoid function. That means the value of the logistic functions lies between the 0 to 1 based on the sigmoid function because of when the sigmoid function we are going to apply, we have to fix in the, uh, like, you know, threshold value. Based on the threshold value, we can find whether it is 0 or 1. These or that. So that's why I mentioned here. Then how does it work? In sigmoid function, is a mathematical function used to map the predicted value probabilities. Okay, so it maps the real value into the another value within the range of 0 to 1. So that's why I'm, I'm saying here, in sigmoid function is the mathematical function is used to map the predicted value of probability based on the threshold. So it maps the real value into the another value within the range of 0 to 1. The value of logistic regression must be 0 or 1, these or that's uh, true or false and which cannot be beyond the limit and it forms like you know the curve you can see here. Yes, so that's why I mentioned here. The yes form curves is called as the sigmoid function. So the logistic regression we use the concept of the threshold value here. That is like you know 0 0.5. Okay, so which is defined as the probability range either 0 or 1, such as the value is above the threshold value of 0 0.5 in the sense that is tends to 1, below 0 0.5 in the sense that is tends to 0. Based on these particular, I mean, you know, threshold value, this is the way it will be working. That is nothing but the logistic regression. For this, I mean, you know, like uh, different data features, like, you know, temperature range, humidity range, wind range, for the certain times, the rain will be fall or not. That is our, I mean, you know, prediction by using this kind of the algorithm. Okay. So, without delay, I am going to explain about the coding. And before entering the coding, before entering the coding, so, if you guys are really interested to join the internship meets, please do join the internship. The link is mentioned in the comment box. If you guys are ready to join the internship meets, what you will get? Highly organized video content, everyday PPTs, everyday materials, everyday source code you will get. And the video will be accessible for 30 days. Don't forget to join this. We will be discussing about the 20 projects in machine learning concepts. Okay. Now, I am going to explain about this particular coding one by one. Okay, right. First, we need to import the necessary library. Okay, right. Before that, I will be show the like you know data set here. You can see the data set. So this is like you know uh, yeah, just a minute. 
So this is like a, a rainfall data set. So you can see you can see it having like you know multiple yeah data set like you know rainfall uh, evaporation sunshine uh, west and uh, direction wind speed uh, humidity pressure cloud from 9 a.m cloud 3 p.m temperature 9 a.m temperature 3 p.m for the timing or as well as the it will be informed to that and the temperature rain today rain tomorrow based on the pressure range as well so based on this particular data feature this outcome will come okay right now i'm going to enter to creating a project here okay right just a minute yeah first import the necessary libraries hope the screen is visible so here import the necessary libraries okay import numpy import matplot import pd that is data manipulation data visualization data visualization now we are going to load in the data with the help of the read csv we have to mention that particular i mean you know, like file name of the csv okay this is the data set so what is the name of this you can see here rainfall dot csv okay so data is equal to pd dot read csv once it is loaded we have to display the first five rows of that you can see data dot head of it will be displayed the first five rows you can see here minimum temperature and maximum temperature cloud temperature 3 pm 9 am rain today and risk rain tomorrow okay right now the data columns name will be displaced with the help of dot columns function that is state location minimum temperature maximum temperature and rainfall and evaporation sunshine like that okay then data dot shape so it having 366 rows and 24 columns now we are going to find the null value okay is there any null value we have to find so with the help of is null will help to find the null values dot sum will calculate the null values so here uh yeah for wind direction 9 am 31 null values wind test speed nearly 2 and direction 3 sunshine 3 and direction 3 1 and wind speed 7 so this much of the null values we have so we have to clear it up because of this is very less null values so that is the reason i'm going to prefer the like you know drop now function to drop on the rows of these particular null values assigned so null values is occur 3 3 2 31 1 and 7 okay right. now data is equal to data dot drop now will help to remove this kind of the null values of the I amino mean, like assigning the null values in the sorry acquire null values will be removed uh, the rows okay so drop and will help to remove the null value rows okay now we are going to find is there any null value so data dot is null of dot sum of it will be going to remove and clear the data set is very clear all the statistical now we are going to enter to the all the statistical values for like you know each and every data set uh dot describe will help to like you know giving the count and mean so here 328 only the remaining will be cleared because of 30 yeah one and plus here uh yeah six and eight 39 and 40 47 rows will be removed okay 47 rows will be removed here the 47 rows will be removed in the sense okay 47 rows will be removed in the sense you have to prefer like you know fill now okay you have to prefer fill now so otherwise we, you are going to use the drop now will help to remove all the values okay right now dot columns will be display here now i am going to count in the range today based on the data features so data dot rain today dot value count will be displaced rain today no 267 rain today as yes, 61 and will displace the i mean you know like uh, the graphical representation of this particular rain today so 
yeah sns dot count plot of like you know rain today of the data you can see here yes this much and no this much that means 267 no's and 61 yes okay right now the distribution plotting okay the rainfall See, this is like you know the density range of the rainfall so you can see here this is the range actually this particular data having like you know the value of rainfall the range of the rainfall you can see here yeah so here the distribution will be displaced like you know this much is the very high value of the density okay so this will be like you know going to through this and eventually it will be reduced okay right after that dot columns and now we are going to enter to convert the rain today and tomorrow there will be like you know yes and no uh, like you know word will be there we have to convert zero and one so zero for no yes for one so we have to convert how to convert that one in the sense you should call the rain today then you have to convert rain today dot apply is one of the function we are going to use the lambda function x is to one if x is to yes in the sense that is one otherwise it will be zero so by using the lambda function x is to one is nothing but yes uh, yeah yes is equal to one zero is equal to no so that's why when you are going to apply this particular rain today column dot apply the lambda x is to one if x is equal to yes otherwise it will be zero okay right now we are going to splitting the data that is independent data as well as the dependent data you can see here so train minimum maximum rainfall evaporation sunshine and this all are the i mean like independent data and the rain tomorrow will be the label data so based on this particular uh, like you know data features the rain will be fall tomorrow yes or no that is the needed right so the rain today is also the one of the column here so we have to convert the range so that's why we need to convert the yes or no into the zero or one okay so by using this particular lambda function x is to one if x is equal to yes in the sense that is one otherwise it will be zero okay right for the same the rain tomorrow so data of rain tomorrow the data of rain tomorrow dot apply the same thing we need to convert like you know zero or one from yes or no so rain tomorrow dot apply lambda x is to one if it is x yes so yes in the sense that will be one okay otherwise it will be zero so this is a way to convert that after that we need to change the dummy get dummies because of you could see here just an example i'm saying yeah see here get dummies we need to do that for wind has direction and also the wind direction 9 am we need to convert southwest northwest like that okay so we need to convert that particular range into the like you know numerical format how we can do that so with the help of dot get dummies will help to convert the categorical variable and values into the dummy values okay see here the train the columns name this is the uh, like you know the wind has to direction so get dummies will help to convert the categorical variable into the dummy values okay right now we are going to splitting the data set for training data as well as the testing data for training and also the validation so x train y train and x test and y test so train test split get it from the model selection module from the scalar and this is the function 
so in this particular function we need we need like you know the two different variable that is training as well as a label this is rain tomorrow remaining will be the train the test size here i mentioned 0 0.6 we'll see what is the value of that here once you apply the rain uh, yeah that particular like you know uh, this um, data set is created training data as well as a testing data is created now we are going to enter the logistic regression from SQL dot linear model already we know that how to import that one from SQL dot linear model and import the logistic regression so import this is the logistic regression function and from SQL load dot metrics and import accuracy score will help to calculate the accuracy score here. So now the model one. So for this particular function, you have to creating the object of this particular function. So mod one is one of the object for this particular function. So mod one is equal to logistic regression. The model is created. After that, we'll get it to the like you know model fit function okay here i changed uh, like you know the uh, direction actually so i made a mistake here what is that in the sense x train x test y train y test is the correct format here i didn't change that okay so for example that order is very important so that's why i i mean you know like uh, i changed here so this is the location for the y train actually this is the position for the white train so you have to like you know uh, paste here white train but i mentioned here like you know the uh, x test so i passed here okay this is very important actually uh, now only i could see in here okay fine now the x test now so this is the training data actually the name i had changed here so this is white train only okay white train this is the training data now i will see here just a minute i can change here then only you can understand maybe that you don't understand about it okay just cut and paste it here and here yeah now you can go to run this and um, run run and run and here you need to change the y train here and run and here x test we have to pass because of we changed already that is x test okay so with the help of dot fit function for the x train data it will be trained now we are going to predict okay now we are going to predict so lf is equal to mod one dot predict of x test and run this then we are going to enter into the accuracy score now we are going to enter into the 95 percentage the accuracy score will get it from the matrix and import the accuracy score we have to compare the y test and also the lf okay clear now 95 percentage of the output from the logistic regression okay right and now we are going to entering into the confusion matrix actually the confusion matrix is uh, will help to display the performance of the model and the performance of the classes for example uh, where we can make the error it will be displayed so actual value and also the error value it will be displayed where the, our predicted value will be displayed and the confusion matrix will be giving the I mean, you know like output for the performance of the model so the same thing y test and also the um, if uh, that means lf logistic uh, like you know regression will be displayed here now we are going to pass to the heat map actually the heat map is a graphical representation for better understanding of the user for the performance of the model so based on the color it will be displayed low color will be the i mean you know, like uh, error value and high color will be the predicted value like that it will be displayed see here the sns 
dot heat map is a graphical representation for the performance of the model it will be displays the actual values of the output and also the predicted value of the output and also the error it will be mentioned so this is the con uh, confusion matrix you have to pass and here the not have to see i mean like true and c map you have to mention the color and format will be like you know at, like you know for example in a point the after it will be three format if you mention it two in this one three two zero will be there and x labels that is label and x x labels that is the label okay so this is the output predicted output labels so it will be displaced for zero one fifty three for one it is thirty three and five and six this will be the I mean like uh, giving the error actual values and also the error value now we are going to enter into the random forest how to do that the same thing from sklearn.ensemble import the random forest classifier okay so this is the function we are going to use so mod 2 is equal to run and mod 2 run so model is created the second model so mod 2 is equal to random forest classifier now we have to pass here y train okay y train okay right now i am going to run this the random forest this model is trained after that the predicted here x test we have to pass so x test now we are going to run this and the accuracy score have to pass y test as well as the random forest then got the accuracy score here that is 94 now the matrix and confusion matrix will displace the classes of the I mean, performance of the model. So run, run, sorry, just a minute. Here we have to pass the X test. Okay. Or otherwise, you have to pass the R of here. Otherwise, you have to pass R of here. Just run this. You can get it the like you know this particular graph. This is the heat map of that random forest actual and also the predicted value will be displayed. There is how to the, create that one. So you have to pass the C and that is a confusion matrix and not true and C map and finally like you no know, this is the color and format 3F. So 2F in the sense after point it will be 2. Then X ticks label and Y ticks label, that's labels. It will be displayed. Now we are going to compare and displace the performance of the model in a graphical representation for the understanding of the user or otherwise the I mean you know a presentation uh, uh, like you know purpose. So import map lot pip lot and this is the like you know plt then numpy and also the matplot the objects we are going to create that is like you know logistic regression and also the random forest and this is the range between like you know two different objects and performance accuracy one and accuracy so sorry accuracy and accuracy model one and model two of the accuracy then bar plot you have to pass the length of the bar plot and performance is needed then align is the center and alpha value is 0 0.5 that is default then X ticks that is Y pose and also the object. This is the label and title. You can see here logistic regression and random forest. So which one is very high? Which one is very high accuracy? Logistic regression will giving the 95 percentage. That one is the best output of the like you know best model of our particular target. Am I right? Best accuracy of our particular model. So that is logistic regression and random forest just a minute. I'm going to run this. You can see the output for this. Yeah, you can see the logistic regression will giving the good. Well, I mean, like a little bit, one percentage will be increased. So the logistic regression only the best model of our particular target. You can see that. No, just a minute, zoom out. Yeah, you can see so this will be little bit high okay this is the way we can choose our model this is the way we can create our model and uh, like you know uh, calculate the accuracy score and evaluation of the model i hope you guys are understood about this
If you guys are clear, means please mention in the comment box as well. Please mention in the comment box as well. That's it all about rainfall prediction. Before entering to the, uh, I mean, like thanking session. Today, I will be, I mean, you know, uh, saying uh, something to you about like, you know, wasting time. The six ways you are wasting time. The six ways you are wasting time. Think about it. Where you are going to wasting your time actually. That's very important, right? Sometimes like, you know, you don't know about that. I will tell you and you could remember maybe that, yeah, this is the way to we are wasting the time. Maybe that you could understand about it. After that, once you know means after that, you have to avoid this much of things. Okay. So six ways you wasting time. The first one. Worrying what other things that is not needed because of you are living in your life. Am I right? You are living in your life. So if they are thinking, I mean, you know, about you in this sense, that is not a matter about us. Don't think too much about that particular others thinking. No, not a matter. Just live for you and think for you. That's it. That is the first one. You are wasting the time most of the time like that. Others thinking. So just avoid it. And second one, complaining about everything. Sometimes, if you don't like, if you are getting irritating one particular things in the sense, that time you are always automatically the complaining will come. Automatically, the complaining is come. So don't do that. Don't do that. If you are not like means, just avoid that and don't speak about it. So that will be making the complaining. Okay, so complaining about everything that is also a waste of time. So don't do that. Then try to please everybody. Trying to please everybody. That is not needed action. Why? So don't do that. That is also one kind of the wasting of time. And being a perfect destinist. Being a perfect. Yeah, everyone wants to be. Sometimes we are not perfect. So, for every situation, we, we can't be perfect, no. For every situation, we can't be perfect. Sometimes, we have to liberate. And uh, when you are going to making yourself perfectness in a sense, that is not, like, you know, a good way. Sometimes, we need that one. So, that is also one kind of, like, you know, uh, wasting time. And another thing, repeating the same mistake again and again. That is also kind of wasting time. Because... You have to correct it. When you are going to do the same mistakes again and again in the sense that will be taking more time. But you are not getting the result in the sense that is no, there is no use, right? So that is also considering like, you know, waste of time. And sixth one, fearing failure. Fearing failure. Yes. Me also. Me also. The failure is a little bit of pain. But... That is also a kind of experience. If you think like, yeah, it is a kind of experience in the sense, don't fear about it. If you are fearing in the sense, you are not taking as an experience. Um, I, th I thought. So don't fearing about your failure. It is a kind of learning. It is a kind of experience. That will be practiced you to like, you know, uh, move to the positive. So, these all are the six ways we are wasting your time of yours. Worrying about uh, what other things, complaining about everything, trying to be, uh, trying to please everybody, being perfectionist and repeating the same mistake and fearing the failure. Don't more time spend with these kind of the things. That is waste of time. Okay, just avoid it. Okay, so keep your life calm. Keep your life positive. And keep your face, mind always be happy. And one more announcement for final year students. The major projects are available. All the software projects starts from 6,000 rupees. What you will get 
once you registered this particular project complete project source code installation and execution of the project source code and complete explanation of the projects and full documents reports ppts you will be get all the things you will be get the classes also we are going to assigning to explain about the projects contact okay so contact 89255348 Contact 89255343485. So visit our website www.pantokeylearning.com. Contact us for internship queries 89255343484. Visit our website and if you have any queries, please send a mail to this mail id philip.pedit at pantokmail.com. So you, you want to connect with me in the social media in the sense Philip Pedit AJJ, that is the Facebook account. Explore your knowledge with us. We are always here for you to support you anytime, anywhere and any places. Thank you so much. Good night. Have a delicious dinner. Bye-bye.